otherwise technology operates about as you'd expect it to. The upgrade, it unlocks the ability to, you know, build some buildings. Administrative technology is one that I find to probably be the most important because that unlocks your idea groups, which we will just go over here next. Uh, as you can see, you can get as many as eight idea groups, but you only get a new idea grouping every three to five administrative technology levels. And the idea groups give you various bonuses. You can see there's several in each of the classifications that you can take. And so the administrative ideas would cost you administrative points, diplomatic points, military points. These are not as expensive as technology upgrades, but they are pretty expensive. It's, it's typically 400 points to do one of these, whereas a tech upgrade is 600. So you have to be really careful when you're trying to decide if you should upgrade your technology level next or if you should get an idea next. Um, getting the idea grouping itself is free once you've gotten up to the administrative technology level to unlock a new slot. It doesn't cost me anything once I've got that tech level to select one of these. But I, I don't just automatically get all seven of these ideas. I have to go through them in order, and I have to be paying 400 points per idea to unlock them. But these give you bonuses. They give you pretty nice bonuses. It kind of determines how your country is going to play and you know, what their strengths are. Um, if I'm going to favor trade, I'm going to want to be taking the trade ideas that are going to increase my trade power and give me extra merchants, boost my trade range, trade efficiency. If I'm going to be militaristic, I'm going to want to come over here to the military ideas and choose what variety I am. If I'm thinking I'm going to be attacked a lot, I'm probably going to take some defensive ideas. If I plan on just being a, a warmonger, I'm going to go with the offensive ideas. Quality, quantity, so on and so forth. The administrator's got some interesting things. It's got the espionage tree. There's spy actions that you simply cannot take unless you have the right espionage idea. Fabricating claims, however, is a little bit easier in this than it was in 3. In 3, you sent a spy out, and he had a percentage chance every month to possibly fabricate the claim, and it could take you forever. Uh, if it was just like a 1% chance, he could be there for 10 years and not ever figure it out. In this you are guaranteed to be able to fabricate a claim, but it's going to take you X amount of days, months, whatever, to be able to do that based on your spy offense ability. And there is a chance that he will still be discovered doing that, but rather than stopping the process and kicking your spy out of the country, it just damages your relations with your neighbors. You'll take like a negative 15 or 25 point uh, relationship with your surrounding neighbors because of that. Um, oh shoot, I'm going to lose a stability here because of this stupid thing. Uh, but we are defensive because we are Switzerland. So that just dropped my stability. And stability goes up based on your administrative points. You have to spend administrative power points to boost your stability. Stability affects a lot of things. Your global trade power, your spy defense, your revolt risk, uh, your income, your tax income will be affected by your stability level, so it's really important to keep that up as high as you possibly can. And this is why I usually like to have a leader who's either got a high administrative skill or higher advisors to make up for any lack in administrative skill that my leader might have. Because not only does the administrative tech unlock your ideas, but it's also affecting your stability. So like right now, I really don't want to be at negative one stability. I'm going to have to throw 90 of my administrative points to boost that back up just to zero. It gets pretty expensive at the higher stability ratings. It can get up to, you know, 200, 300, depending upon what modifiers you have to your stability cost. 
Uh, I don't much care to do that. That's delayed getting my next administrative tech level, but I'm going to just have to live with it. Uh, you can see there's the war exhaustion. I already mentioned that you can reduce that by putting power points into it as well. Uh, this will also show you Rebels. Your, your Rebel screen is here. They had that in Europa 3 as well, but uh, any revolt risk that you have is going to be showed here, and there's various actions that you can take from acquiescing to the demands to boosting stability to spending 50 military points to enact a harsh treatment policy in that province, which will reduce the revolt risk for, I think, like five years, maybe ten years. I think it's five. Uh, let's see, we were on ideas. Okay, back to ideas. You have nation-specific ideas as well. In addition to the ones that you can unlock, there's also nation-specific ideas. That's what these are. These are Switzerland's. These unlock based on the number of choosable ideas that you have. So, like, I will unlock the Swiss Confederation, Swiss idea, after I have unlocked three optional ideas. Then I will just automatically get the Swiss Confederation. And it just keeps going. Every three ideas that you take out of the unlockables, you'll get a new national idea. So for the Swiss, stability cost modifier down. Uh, the Swiss were famous for their mercenaries, the Landeschnecht. And so the second idea in the Swiss tree reduces the mercenary cost because we're the home to most of the mercenaries, so hopefully you know, our, our native sons would give us a discount if we decided we needed to hire them. Uh, Alpine defensiveness, you know, the Swiss is located on the Alps, it's never fun attacking up a mountain. Uh, boost for defense. You probably don't need to know all of those. Missions and decisions operate the same as they did in Europa 3. There's you know, little missions that you can take if you choose to. That'll give you rewards. Uh, if we decide to try to improve our prestige and we make a prestige of 50, we'll you know, gain a stability point, which would be pretty cool, but unless you're fighting a lot, it's kind of difficult to get your prestige up reliably. There's a lot of events and things that will boost your prestige, but those tend to be random. So I would not take that in this instance, as I do not expect to be fighting a whole lot of wars as Switzerland. Uh, national decisions, same thing. You have certain prerequisites that you can fill, and then if you want to, you can take these ideas, usually for a bonus and a penalty. Typically, it'll be like I'll gain 8% tax income on a monthly basis, but I'll have a negative 5% to my stability cost modifier, which will cost me more administrative points when I try to boost my stability. Or my missionaries will get plus 1 to their effectiveness, but I'll have a you know additional 3% revolt risk going on. And so there's just things that you can take and add a little flavor and some modifiers to your nation. Uh, we've been over stability. Uh, that's also got your colonial statistics on it that pretty well operate the same way as they did in Europa 3. A uh, slight difference in colonization. You do not have to have a colonist remain in a location that you're trying to colonize for the population to go up. I think you had to keep them there in Europa 3. In this, you can send them there to first establish the colony, and then you can recall them. It slows down the population growth, but it allows you to obviously resend that colonist to make a new colony. Uh, religion. Still got the nice Holy See screen here. You can vote on cardinals, and if they... Well, you can... Yeah, vote on cardinals, and they'll become loyal to you if they get appointed to the see. Um, kind of difficult to do if you don't have a lot of papal influence modifiers. Uh, papal influence goes up on a monthly basis, just like everything else, and it's based off of a few things. Uh, your international relations with the Papal States. 
your religious unity within your own nation. You know, if you've got some provinces that are not Catholic, that's going to damage the amount of papal influence that you get. And there's a cap on the number of papal influence points that you can have at one time. Mine is 34.97.